one, go. Okay, so last time we, uh, we were here, we talked a little bit about clock one locking to clock two. Okay, let's show that again. Clock one is like the source or the reference. It delivers timing information, and we didn't get into very much detail on what this timing information was, but we looked at clock two being locked to clock one using this timing information. Now, anytime you have a delivery of timing information, there's going to be some additive noise, which we generically refer to as some uh, random quantity. And what this clock two does is filter this random noise. Now, how do we know this is doing a good job or not doing a good job? And this is where we get into the notion of m time and t there, two different metrics which are associated with timing and each gives you a slightly different take on whether this is doing a good job or not. Again, uh, the basis of all these metrics is a measurement and what we are trying to measure, if we have clock one available, we can use it or we have to use some other reference clock. But we compare these two, the clock two output with a reference Ideally, this reference is clock one, but we may not have it available. And from here, this error is our time error sequence, or otherwise known as, sometimes we refer to as X of C. Now, let's look at what are the components. If, if this signal is nice and clean, what do we expect this time error to look like? Let's look at the components of time error. We have something which we refer to as a constant time error, which is like a fixed phase offset. If you're looking at frequency, this is not an issue. If you're looking at time transfer, this becomes very important. So I'll leave it in here. Then there's a, a quantity Y, which we refer to as the fractional frequency offset. Ideally, we want this to be zero. Why? Because we expect the two to be locked, so they should have the same frequency. There may be some drift component. Again, if the two are locked, we would expect this to be essentially zero. And then you always have some random component associated with it. So what does m tie do? m tie looks at the peak to peak, in a sense. So m time, think of it as a way of measuring the peak to peak errors between uh, the clock output and its reference. The other is TDEV. TDEV doesn't care, actually does not care about the, the fractional frequency offset, and neither cares about the constant time error. This one looks like at the stability. In other words, it's look, t -dev, to some extent, looks like the standard deviation of the noise after it's been passed through some kind of filter. The m tie looks at the peak-to-peak -peak of this noise over intervals of time. Now, these intervals of time traditionally are referred to as tau. So, when you think of tau on the, on the x-axis, m tie will be a curve which is I'm just going to show some curve. It is A, it is non-decreasing, always increases. And the value at some tau naught, for example, is the peak to peak observed over any interval of time tau sub zero. T-dev is a little more compli complicated, so we'll cover that especially in a separate segment. 